Good afternoon, morning, everyone. Welcome to our session today. Before we begin our topic sharing today, let us look at what are some of the exciting meetings and discussion that is upcoming. So the first one is on this Wednesday, which is a date with Associate VP uh, by Miss Anna Wong. So Miss Anna Wong will be sharing some good news, uh, but only those who are of diamond level and above are invited to this Zoom meeting. So this is a Chinese session. If you are, uh, you are fulfilling the requirement, please stay tuned, log your date at uh, 3 p.m. this Wednesday. Next up, on the same day at night, 9 p.m. on this platform, My Central G Spirit, we will have uh, Miss Ime Ting that will be sharing with us in this session, in this business showcase session. So again, if you're interested, remember to tune in. It is a Chinese session as well. And finally, this Friday at night, 9 p.m., let's learn about L. Marino Yang from Mr. Bin Hui. Again, it is a live session on my Central G Spirit platform. Now, today we will be going to understand about immune system again. So, welcome everyone. My name is Chiling. As you have seen the title here, Improve Your Immune System. We know that. Um, this has been a hot topic since the beginning of the COVID-19. And do remember, the pandemic is not over yet, which is why it is still very important for us to understand and to take care uh, of our immune system. Keep practicing social distancing, keep practicing good personal hygiene, wear your mask, wash your hand, eat a healthy diet, exercise as you need, all these things help to protect yourself from any potential infection, not just COVID-19. So today, let us look further in how to improve our immune system. First of all, why do we need to strengthen our immune system? Of course, our immune system is like our own team of army that help to fight off bacteria, viruses, parasites that could cause problems to our health. They can all cause diseases. And these diseases are infectious, which means if we get it and we may pass it to somebody else. So we want to stop this transmission, we want to stop it entirely. All of us should have very strong immune system. We have a strong immune system, not just it helps you to prevent any potential infectious diseases, but if you're unluckily uh, fall sick, it also helps you to recover faster and maybe experience a milder symptom. So that's why immune system is very important. Here are some of the health problems that are very closely related to upset immune system. It could be overreactive, for example, allergies and autoimmune diseases. These two problems can happen when our immune system is overreactive. Uh, it is attacking your cell when it's not supposed to be. It is providing or producing immune response when it is not supposed to be. So this is one of the problems when the immune system is out of balance. Okay, example of allergies are like eczema, which attack the skin, affect the skin, or autoimmune system like SLE. SLE could attack any part of the body, and if it happened to be any of your important organ, it could also be life threatening. And the third one is infections. Um, the common one are flu, cold, which means if somebody they are weaker in their immune system, they always get cold or they can catch any flu because people nearby have that problem. So a strong immune system can prevent us from falling sick frequently, which are related to infectious sickness. And the last one is cancer. Now we know that cancer have a lot of different causes, but if we have a very strong immune system, our body should be able to get rid of abnormal cell 
abnormal cell growth in our body to prevent um, to prevent cancer problem because cancerous cells are cells that is growing abnormally and in a very fast pace so it will result in a tumor um, but under normal circumstances, if we are strong enough, our immune system is working properly, they should be able to identify abnormal cell and get rid of them before it can establish in our body. So this is one of the reasons why if we have a poorer immune system, we may have higher risk of getting cancer. Now, these are common problems related to the immune system. Of course, there are a lot more factors that can cause health problems directly or indirectly. It could be uh, causes that can affect our immune system and as a, consequences, as a consequence affect our other health problems. We can invite or contribute to other health problems. So because of modern life nowadays, the first and most common unhealthy factors is unhealthy eating. <coughs> right? So, it is easy to understand because modern life, we are rushing on time. We tend to choose food that is easily available and food that is delicious, especially when we feel stressed, right? But actually, the, the right way of eating should be following this healthy plate, right? We should always make sure our meal, every single meal is complete with whole grains as carbohydrate, source of carbohydrate to give us energy. We also need to pair a quarter of our plate with protein. It could be animal sauce or plant-based sauce. Um, and finally, half of our plate should be filled with vegetables and fruits because vegetables and fruits are good source of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Our immune system definitely need all of this to function together, to function well. So unhealthy eating could lead to obesity, okay? Or unhealthy weight loss it could be either one. So sometimes we may think that obesity is overnutritious, but no. When people have obesity, it could they could be um, under nutrition as well because to gain weight you don't need nutrients to be exact. You need calorie. So uh, problems with unhealthy eating. A more common type of unhealthy eating is indulging in food that is calorie dense but not nutrient dense very high in calorie very low in nutrients so this is one of the way or one of the reason uh, why unhealthy eating can cause health problems because of weight gain and this is a worrying problem especially in malaysia being the fattest country in southeast asia half of a population of adults population is either overweight or obese but in fact, this group of people, they are not necessarily getting the nutrients that they want. Now, the second factors, unhealthy factors that could lead to problem is air pollution. Especially for people living in the cities, um, we have very high density of population and a lot of vehicles. So toxic gas released from these vehicles can cause problems because some of these gases may increase carcinogenic activities. To put it simple, um, they may increase the risk of getting cancer and in this case it could be lung cancer and of course not just from the vehicles for people who are staying near industrial area factories also release toxic gases just like what vehicles did and this is causing a problem if we are exposed to polluted air long term and pollution could also come from open burning open forest burning um, and uh, unfortunately this is what is happening every year so air pollution is a big one um, especially for city uh, residents sometimes suburban population can also be affected third one is water pollution and this is also very very common especially in the city area because of potential contaminants coming from the factories. So when we compare dirty water in the past to nowadays, dirty water in the past is simple. As long as you filter out the sediment, the sand and the mud, 
and you boil the water to kill bacteria and virus, the water is safe to drink. But nowadays, we have this type of sick water that is polluted with a lot of synthetic chemicals, um, heavy metals, residues coming from industrial area, from agriculture site, like pesticide, insecticide, um, heavy metals that can cause problems to our nervous system. And a lot of these uh, chemical actually can also affect our reproductive system. So water nowadays it not, is not just dirty, it is sick, sick water that can cause more problem, more health problem to our body and not just normal or simple filtration can remove all these um, harmful substances. Next one is stress. Again, when we talk about modern life, stress is unavoidable because of our lifestyle. So, and stress is not just troubling adults, working adults nowadays. Even school children, even teenagers, we all have stress. And the most common consequence of not handling stress well is affecting our mental health, mental illnesses. Stress is a big deal but we do not know how to deal with stress. So aside from mental health, it is also affecting our physical health because a lot of unexplained chronic pain and unexplained discomfort in our body could stem from chronic stress. So it is very important to learn how to deal with it, how to handle it. The fifth one is the lack of exercise. I bet 10 out of nine, nine out of 10 of us, we are living a very sedentary lifestyle because again, modern life, people are spending more time on their work, okay, less time on exercising. And when we think about exercise, we feel tired because we are already tired by working. And most of us feel like I don't have more time for exercise. I don't have the energy to exercise. Now, according to statistics, one out of three Malaysians do not exercise. And the problem with that is that exercise is actually good to train our heart muscle, to pump blood, improve our blood circulation, improve oxygen intake, our cell needs oxygen, improve waste removal, or what we call detoxification, because our blood carries um, waste product to be removed. So if we have poor blood circulation, we will definitely have poor detoxification. And then when we have poor blood circulation, we have poor oxygen intake, which is very important and the most fundamental things that our cell need to survive and function normally. And finally, unhealthy lifestyle. The common unhealthy lifestyle that we can observe nowadays is smoking, Okay, it could be due to stress, due to peer pressure. Sometimes even for work, where we need to socialize, smoking is uh, what we say we, we couldn't run away from, especially for men. And then um, medication intake, long-term medication intake could also lead to some problem. Not getting enough sleep or staying up late because of your unhealthy lifestyle, procrastination, scrolling on your smartphone, playing video games, all these things lead to insufficient sleep or staying up late. Sometimes it's not really about you are having a very packed uh, schedule, but sometimes it's procrastination and sticking on the phone. And there you go, you lost one or two hours of sleep. So all these unhealthy lifestyle stem from our stuff. And if we want to look for solution okay, of all these factors, we should look into the real problem, the actual problem that we have to tackle. So first, if you know that your problem is because of the dietary intake, now just try your best to adhere to good dietary intake. For example, a very basic step is to learn about the healthy plate I shared earlier. Make sure that your main meals is always completed with whole grains, protein, and lots of fiber from vegetables and fruits. That is the fundamental one. Stay away from processed food, stay away from fast food, 
we can enjoy those once in a while, but not on a very regular basis. So start with good dietary intake, good nutrition intake. And of course, when required, we can supplement with some health food product or health food product. Now, the second one is improved lifestyle. Of course, again, like what I say, if you know that that is your problem, for example, sleeping late, smoking, then from today onwards, you can seek help for smoking cessation program. There are free program out there put up by our government. You can seek professional help for that. And if you know that you're sleeping late, today onwards, set an alarm, remind yourself to go to bed early, stop scrolling on the phone because it's not giving you any benefit for doing that, right? So you may save yourself for half an hour or one hour of sleep. And then thirdly, avoid contamination. Water contamination, invest in a good quality air, a water filter system at home. If it's air pollution, plant more trees around your house. Um, make sure that the air movement in your room is good. If you're in an enclosed space, um, of course, you can also uh, use uh, some help from air refreshional uh, machine or air humidifier to help you to reduce the uh, inhalation of polluted air, smoke, dust, all this. You can do something about it. And then number four is stress management. Good way to reduce stress. Actually, exercise is one of it. It helps you to increase your happy hormone, to reduce your stress hormone. Some people may uh, prefer doing yoga, dancing, anything that helps you to feel better, singing. Um, and meditation is also good. If you don't have time for all this, just give yourself a short few minutes to just stay calm, uh, be, be with yourself, clear up things in your mind. This is also a very good way to manage stress. Talk to people, you trust them. Talk. And if you need, you can also always seek for professional help. If you need, uh, of course, more um, professional advice in managing your stress when it, you feel like, you know, there is a need for that. That's not wrong to seek for help. So remember that seek, seeking help is not wrong. It is, it is what you should do, um, especially when it comes to stress management. Because you, you can't handle it alone. That's why you need help, right? And then the next one is exercise regularly. Now, when we talk about exercise, it is not necessarily something that is very vigorous, something that is hard. You don't have to go to the gym to call it an exercise. You can exercise at home. You can exercise in the park. You can do simple stretching to improve your blood circulation. You can start with walking after your dinner time around the neighborhood. A good 30 minutes help to maintain healthy weight. So you can start from small steps. Do not go for something that is out of your ability to keep yourself going. Go for something you enjoy. And finally, practice the concept of comprehensive health care. Now, when we say comprehensive, we are looking into uh, prevention, healthcare prevention in different perspective, not just one thing. We are looking in um, different perspective, things that our body needs to be taken care of as a whole. So one of the way is to follow the MRT concept, which comprises of four steps to complete this comprehensive healthcare. The first step is balanced diet, balanced nutrition intake. So being balanced means you get things that you need in the right amount. Secondly is to increase oxygen intake. As what we have understood earlier, things like air pollution, stress, lack of exercise, all these can decrease or reduce our oxygen in the body. Thirdly is detoxification. Now, we, our body can detoxify itself, but sometimes it may need help to improve the detoxification function. And when we have balanced nutrition, we have oxygen, these are the fundamental that our body needs, and then we can 
ensure that our body is functioning well by having a very good detoxification system to remove unwanted waste product in the body that can get in the way of our healthy body. And finally, we want to maintain it. So the fourth step is health regulation. So today we'll look into the first and the fourth step with the help of certain products, especially if you're someone who is short of time, um, you can't really take good care of your diet, as in you cannot really make sure you get all the essential nutrients in the right amount, you probably need help. So our body needs adequate nutrients, especially our immune system, need a wide range of nutrients to make sure that it is always working well. The first one is um, protein. Protein is very important to build new cells. When we talk about building cells, immune cells are built from protein as well. And the immune system also needs a variety of minerals and vitamins to activate the immune cell to facilitate the function of this cell. So if you are lacking of important min minerals and vitamins, of course protein, we will have lower immune system and compromised immune protection. So one of the ways to make sure that we get uh, all these essential nutrients that we can't produce by our body, we rely on the food source, but when we can't get enough from food source alone, we can consider taking, for example, spirulina. It is a complete and balanced, almost complete and balanced food supplement because when we look into the nutritional profile, it has all the micro and macronutrients. So we say that it is completed with 46 types of essential nutrients that your body cannot make. And the nutrient content is definitely concentrated. It is in dry form. And even though it is a plant-based product, a lot of nutrients inside that is normally low in plant, it is actually very high in spirulina. For example, protein, uh, for example, iron, for example, vitamin B and beta carotene. So spirulina is also unique in different way. The first one is this particular spirulina, it has prestigious record. We know that it has been in the market for over 20 years with more than a million of consumer. Everybody know how good it is. It is certified organic. It has won multiple award not just locally but also internationally it is founded or discovered by renowned researcher uh, professor kyuin kondo from japan he started investigating in this spirulina 30 years ago because uh when who at that time announced that there may be food shortage uh, for human so he was really interested in protein source. So he started looking into spirulina and today we have this very good uh, food supplement. And of course, this product is very well researched. It has 12 analyses, scientific and clinical studies to support its benefits and function. Next up, we want to regulate our body's function. Well, after we get enough of nutrients, we want to make sure that our body is function normally. Sometimes uh, our body may need extra help. In terms of immune system, we might want something that can help to activate our immune cell, something that support the growth and development of our immune cells. So let us look at the first one. Now, ELG6 is colostrum. And what is very rich in colostrum is immune factors and growth factors. Immune factors, for example, immunoglobulin G is very, very high in colostrum. And immune factors are things that help to fight against virus and bacteria. This is especially good for people who have already, you know, weakened immune system. Probably their body cannot produce uh, immune factors very effectively. That's why children and young baby, young infant, they need to get colostrum from their mother because colostrum is a good source of immune factors that, that their body is unable to produce yet. So they rely it from the milk, from the colostrum, from the mother. So for people, maybe they have weakened immune system or they are doing good, but they're looking for extra 
um, probably supplement to help. Then colostrum is something you may consider. It has 31 types of immune factors and nine types of growth factors. Growth factors here is to help our cell to grow and repair. So it is still important despite we are adults, we still need growth factors because our cell needs to be replaced on a daily basis. It needs to be repaired on a daily basis. And of course, a good product or good colostrum source grade A dairy, source the colostrum from grade A dairy cows that are certified by USDA. So it is of a good quality cows, good quality colostrum. The next one that could help our immune system is to have alpha glucan, or in this format, it is patented ingredient called MIME. So MIME is extracted from super mushroom, special selected super mushroom. This MIME ingredient is a powerful immune modulator. It helps to modulate our immune system as in if the immune system is overreactive or underreactive, this ingredient is helpful to balance up or help our uh, immune system to get back to its balance help to activate immune cell that is supposed to be active and tone down those that is not supposed to be overactive. Of course, being a patented ingredient, uh, it is well studied. It has more than 400 clinical studies that is done worldwide in universities from around the world. So for this, um, again, it is part of regulating our immune system. Once we get the nutrients we need, we know how to increase our oxygen intake, um, keep a very healthy detoxification system. And finally, when we're looking to regulate, we can add on a food supplement as such to help to strengthen our immune system further. So as a conclusion, we need to take care of our immune system to prevent further health problems could be more problematic. We know that prevention is always better than cure. And here is the four important take-home message for today's sharing in terms of immune system maintenance. Practice a balanced diet, first step. Secondly, avoid unhealthy lifestyle. If you know you have it, learn to um, undo it, okay? Learn to sleep early, learn to uh, practice a um, healthier way of eating, for example. Start from small steps, start exercising, uh, simple exercise that you enjoy. The third one is practice good personal hygiene, especially during this pandemic time. And finally, supplement with suitable health products. What I mean by suitable is understanding what your body needs, understanding what the products can offer, whether it is suitable to you or it is really what your body needs. So that is all from me today. And I'll see you again. I hope everybody can take very good care of your immune system and continue practicing good hygiene, wear your mask, keep social distancing. We can together fight this pandemic. See you again. Bye.